Where the hell have you been, Wilka? <laughs> oh, you thought I was kidding when I said we were gonna do a Twilight Marathon? Well, you thought wrong, Bella. You thought wrong. And not only are we gonna read Twilight, but we're also gonna watch the movie and put to bed the time old story of who's better, Jacob or Edward. So get ready, get your snacks, get your book, like and subscribe, and let's get going. I have wanted to reread these books since I was like a senior in high school. And the fact that we're finally doing it, I couldn't be happier. I literally have been thinking about doing this video since like January of this year. So I'm excited. And not only are we gonna read the books, but you know that if I'm reading the books, I also have to listen to the soundtrack as we're reading. So I've already got it set up in my Apple Music. I got all my favorite snacks ready too. I got the popcorn, I got ice cream, I got wine. We've got all the goods. Also side note, that wig was so itchy. I love Jacob, but I don't know how he had that long hair like that. Crazy. I was also thinking the only way we can really decide and determine who was better, Edward or Jacob, is to keep score. So for this entire Twilight series, we are really going to see who's the better man. Also, <laughs> I don't know if you do this, but when I read, I need to visualize someone as the main love interest. So just so that you know, when I'm doing this and I'm reading this book, Edward is now Jungkook. <laughs> So we may be switching sides because y'all know how I feel about my man. Also, Jacob is, let me see. I feel like Jacob is still Taylor Lautner because he's, he's just aging so well. So JK and Taylor, keep that in mind. All right, got my headphones. The Twilight series soundtrack. This is the stuff right here, this is the stuff. I haven't listened to this in so long. We're just gonna play this over and over until I finish this gosh darn mother freaking book today. Okay guys, I'm on page 36. Uh, it's only been a few minutes. I think it's been like 40 minutes. And this part has always been one of my favorite parts. It's where they're in the biology class and they're looking at the different slides for mitosis. And uh, Bella was saying how she was confident and was prophase for the first one. And then like their little banter there. <laughs> Edward has this one. Yeah, he has this one. He gets a point because the subtle finger touch, the look away, the confidence, yeah, that was cute. Flirting 101. Edward gets a point. Also, I forgot how good this soundtrack is. I've just been listening to it nonstop, and man, it's so fire. I used to listen to Paramore all the time during this time when I was reading this book, so it just brings back all the feels. And I feel like after this, I'm probably gonna go on a Paramore binge because man, their music was so amazing. It's still really good. I think they still make music, and it just brings me back to such a good time. All right, we're going back in, y'all. The truth is setting in your eyes, and it's hanging on your tongue. It's just boiling in my blood. I forgot how good this playlist is. Oh my god, super massive black hole decode. Tell me they don't slap still. Tell me they don't slap still. Cause they do. It's making reading it so much better. I'm taking a lunch break right now and I'm still in the beginning parts. I'm on page like 68, I think, or 67. I forgot the books are actually really good and they're better than the movies. Cause the books are so thick. I only ever got to read them once all the way through, but I loved every minute of it. And that was years ago. Like I'm talking 2011, <laughs> but I've watched the movies over and over again since then. So my only memory is from the movies. And now I'm reading the books and we're getting the nitty gritty details. <laughs> Inner me, childhood me, thriving right now, thriving. The music is still playing in my head. Also, they need to hurry up and introduce Jacob because I'm becoming dangerously close to becoming an Edward fan. <gasps> Traitor. You are a traitor. I didn't say it, I'm just, you know, putting it out there. 
the banter is bantering. Yeah. When the fumbles turns white, that's when I'll come on. Okay, guys, I'm on page 71. This is the part where Edward is like ignoring her, but like not always ignoring her. And they're in the cafeteria. It says, Edward Cullen is staring at you again, Jessica said, finally breaking through my abstraction with his name. I wonder why he's sitting alone today. My head snaps up. I followed her gaze to see Edward, smiling staring at me from an empty from an empty table across the cafeteria from where he usually sits once he caught my eye he raised one hand motioned with his index finger for me to join him i don't know what to say i don't know what to say i forgot how good the banter was i don't know I'm becoming a fan. I I need this to stop. I need Jacob to come into this book at some point. As you were. I'm on page 216 right now and I've been reading for like six hours. So this is definitely gonna take the rest of the day but I am absolutely enjoying myself so much. Like I can't even keep the smile off my face. I miss this book so much. And there's so many tiny details that they don't catch in the movies. And I'm so grateful to be able to recapture because now I understand why people love Edward so much. Like he's just so thoughtful and I love their honest like chemistry and how they talk to each other and how open they are. And it is really enticing, like I can't lie. To be fair, in Twilight, Jacob doesn't really get a lot of light. So that's why I'm kind of leaning towards Edward right now. And he's being so sweet and so thoughtful. And with my own imagination, Edward is much hotter in my mind through this book than he was in the movie. So all of that is kind of making me lean towards Edward. But you know, we'll see when Jacob has a say, when they talk about them shirtless scenes, okay? And the next book, I'm definitely excited for that. But this is honestly a very fun read. I missed it so much. There's so much nostalgia in this. And I'm just having a great time. I didn't even realize how many hours went by until I looked up. And I'm like, dang, I haven't updated y'all in a while. I know it's going to seem really fast in the video. But like, in real life, I've just been sitting on the couch reading this all day. Didn't even notice it's been the whole day. So I'm very excited to continue reading. I don't know if I'm going to be able to finish this today. It might be super late by the time I finish it, but I still want to watch the movie after. So we need to hurry up and start reading. Listen to this. They're sitting in Bella's room. He just confessed his love to her. It says, bring on the shackles. I'm your prisoner. But his long hands form manacles around my wrists as he spoke. It still hits the same as when I was a kid. This is kind of dangerous though because I'm starting to fall for Edward and their relationship. Like they really need to bring on Jacob because this is not how it's supposed to go. I'm supposed to be team Jacob all the way. And look at me, I'm swooning, swooning, swooning. I get it now, I get why the race was always so close but that line right there bring on bring on the shackles I'm your prisoner and you put the shackles on my I'm telling you I would be a fool for this man oh let, let me go get the scoreboard hold on this is so good I was so scared it was not gonna hit the same, but I am telling you guys, I'm feeling all the feels from 2011, yeah. I get why teenage me was off the charts for this book. I was literally a fiend 
for this series. The crack is still there. The crack is still there and it's still working and it's so good. It's so good. I, I have spent my day reading this book and I do not regret it for a second. I'm enjoying every single minute and it's getting so good. And we got four more thickum books to read in this series. And yes, I know what's gonna happen, but I forgot all the little details and so it feels like a new book again. Ugh, ugh. This is my happy place. I could die reading this series if this was just it. I'm okay with that, yeah, I'm okay with that. Wait, let me go update Goodreads cause I gotta put that in there. Also, side note, have you guys noticed on Goodreads, you can't respond back to people's comments on your phone on the app, but you can when you're on a laptop. Make it make sense. I don't understand that. And so it always looks like I'm ignoring people, but it's because I'm usually checking on my phone and it won't let me reply back. So it's annoying, but I'm going to reply back to y'all now. But let me save this quote because that was cute. That was cute. Bring on the shackles. Dot, dot, dot. I'm your prisoner, yeah. Good morning. I finished it last night. I did. I made it through. I read the whole day. Very proud of myself. But I finished at like 2 a.m. It was 1.48 or 1.50 when I finally finished the last page. And then after that, all I had the energy to do was wash my face and go to bed. So we're back today with my wrap up and my thoughts. And I've got a few of them, I'm not gonna lie. Um, but before you even ask me, just know, it could have been literal poo water on the pages. What? What do you mean by that? Because this series, this book, is my childhood. It's like all of my memories blah, 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 on a page, okay? So <laughs> it didn't matter how I felt about it, it was still gonna be a five star. So I'm extremely, very, very biased. So keep that in mind if you ever wanna read this series. But I do have to say, it kind of still stands the test of time. Yeah, it's still very good. I thought it was still a really beautiful love story. In reality, if I wasn't so attached to it, and it wasn't what it was to me, would it be a five star read? I'm not gonna lie to you, I'm not sure, but it was still so enjoyable and the nostalgia just hit the way it needed it to hit. So I had a great time, I absolutely loved it. But now as an adult, I do have some very real thoughts, some very real opinions that I don't think that I could have put into words as a 15 year old when I initially read this series. So first things first, I think when I was reading the first half of the book this time and I was saying how good the banter was, how good the conversation, the dialogue was going, I think the nostalgia was just literally up my nostrils. I could not think or smell anything in the water. And then the second half of the book, I was like, let me actually pay attention. Let me, let me take myself out of the joy and the memories that I'm feeling. And let me just actually read the book for what it is. And when I did that, I was like, oh my God, wait. Some of this dialogue is kind of trash. I'm not gonna lie. And then Bella was very off-putting, especially towards the end. I never realized this before as a kid, but now as an adult, I'm reading this and I'm like, Bella's a literal crackhead for Edward. Like not in a healthy, cute, this is love kind of way. It's like borderline obsession. It was kind of scary. Like she could not breathe without him, but like not in a cute way, you know? She wasn't her own person without him. And I was just like, ew. <laughs> That's not true love. But I can understand how me as a 15 year old, drunk on the idea of love, in love with the idea of love, how I could just think, yeah, this is the stuff right here. This is what I want straight to the vein. You know what I mean? And I think that that's why we were all hooked on it. That's why we were all feral for this series is because it was such a targeted young audience that knew nothing about love, not really. And it was written the way that we could understand it about a really cool subject, about being the different girl that catches someone else's attention. It was all every teenager wants to be. So of course, we were literally taking it up the nose. But now as an adult, 
I'm just thinking unbiasedly here. I don't know if their relationship is the healthiest display of love. It's more of like an unhealthy attachment. But I'm not saying that they aren't in love. They definitely love each other. They definitely love each other. I can say that confidently. But they don't always display that love in a healthy manner. And this is me as an adult speaking. Am I still going to read this series and have an absolute feral obsession with it? Absolutely. Don't you think for a second that I would ever change. But I'm just saying, I have grown. And I do understand some people's hesitation with this series. Especially if it didn't mean to them what it means to me. So, that happened. <laughs> also, I realized my mission for today's video was to compare Edward and Jacob Tell me why Jacob literally had like five pages of screen time in this whole 400 and some page book. So there was no comparison, obviously. Obviously Edward was winning. And the fight for Edward and Jacob was much closer than adult me is letting on. Because now I'm thinking hindsight when I'm watching these movies over and over again throughout the years. I'm just looking at the movies, not rereading the books. So I'm only getting the details on the screen. And yes, Taylor Lautner is more attractive than the guy who played Edward, Robert Pattinson. So I think that that's where my bias came from. But when I was reading this, I was like, Edward, <laughs> stop being so obsessed with me. Because obviously I was Bella when I was reading this. I used to be so confident with my love for Jacob. And don't get me wrong, I still love Jacob, but like, I'm not so mad that she ended up with Edward after reading this because he was so cute in this. So many revelations, I don't even know what to think anymore. But we're still not done. We are going to watch the actual movie right now. I'm going to get some snacks and we can start. Also, like and subscribe. I love you. I love you. The way I love the Twilight series. Mm. So don't ever say I don't love you. Because my love for this is real. So you know my love for you is real. Okay. Oh, I'm so excited. Okay. It will never stop being good. Never. Okay. So, I can't bring myself to regret the decision to leave home. I would miss Phoenix. I'd miss the heat. Still hits to this, day. to this day. To this day. To this day. That was so cute. I know I said before this wasn't my favorite movie, but it's like picking your favorite child. It's impossible. I don't know. I I love the first movie. It's so good. This was so good. The perfect way to end my weekend. Thank you so much for reliving my childhood with me. It means so much. It just does something to me, you know? So, uh, I'm really happy. Thank you so much. I love you so much. I hope you enjoyed this vlog. And if you did, like and subscribe. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye.